So let's go, you know, step by step with these electron domain number of electron domains, figure out what the electron domain geometry would be, account of the bonding versus non-bonding domains, and then how that relates to the molecular geometry, and then I'll give you some examples. Let's actually start with one of the examples. So if we had something like carbon dioxide, right, where I'm going to assume now you know how to do these Lewis structures. So you count up the number of well, valence electrons carbon has and oxygen, and then you would write the Lewis structure. Something like this. Okay, so again, focus on the central atom, carbon. Carbon here has how many electron domains? I have one, two. Remember those double bonds count as, um, each double bond counts as one electron domain. So I have two electron domains. They're going to get as far away from each other as possible. So if you only have two electron domains, um, right, electron domain two, and in this case they're both bonding. We don't have any non-bonding electron domains on that central atom. So don't get confused with the dots on the oxygen. We're only focusing on the central atom. So the electron domain geometry here is linear. It's just a straight line. And because I don't have any non-bonding electrons, the molecular geometry is also the same. So when you don't have any lone pairs, the molecular geometry is the same as the uh, electron domain geometry. So that's linear. Another one here, if you had BeCl2, that's also linear. And remember beryllium is one of the exceptions to the octet rule. Now let's try another one. Let's look at electron three electron domains. So if I had BF3, I'll draw the Lewis dots, yep, all my lone pair electrons there. But beryllium, how many electron domains does beryllium have? I'm sorry, boron, it's boron. One, two, three, it has three electron domains. So if I have three electron domains, this is called, uh, the electron domain geometry is trigonal planar. Trigonal planar. Trigonal planar. And in this case, I have three bonding. I have zero non-bonding. Remember, non-bonding are the dots. I don't have any dots around that boron. Um, so the molecular geometry is the same. This is also going to be trigonal planar. Now if I had something like this guy, and again I'm assuming you know how to do Lewis dot structures by now. This may take you a little bit longer when you're doing the homework because you're going to have to review how to do those Lewis dot structures. Go back to the videos. Alright, so we have something like this. Now focus on nitrogen. I have one, two, three electron domains. So I know the electron domain geometry is still trigonal planar. I have one, two bonding and one non-bonding. Now notice that the bond angles are not going to change here, right, because I still have this O and O. I have this um, lone pair, it's still repelling these other um, electrons, so it's basically like I have this lone pair of electrons over there, this cloud of, of it's still going to repel the bonding angles there. Um, so the bond angles still are going to be 120, right, I still have bond angles of 120. So if I were to write bond angles here, this is 120, this guy was 120, and remember linear is always 180, so the bond angles didn't really change, but it has a different shape. Um, now when I look at it, it looks bent. It's no longer um, trigonal planar because I don't have a third atom over there, right? So I just have this bent structure, and I'll delete those cloud there. It's just bent. So the electron domain geometry is trigonal planar, but the molecular geometry is bent, because remember when you're looking at the molecular geometry, you're looking at where the atoms are actually located in space. So this is linear and trigonal planar electron domains. Let's see what happens when you have four electron domains. When you have four, it's called tetrahedral. And so let's see, what are our possibilities? You can have four bonding domains and no non-bonding. You can have three bonding, one non-bonding, and then you can have two bonding and two non-bonding. So let's figure out those molecular geometries. So uh, if I had four bonding, that means something like CH4, right, where I don't have any lone pairs, and we already know that if you don't have any lone pairs, the electron domain geometry is, same as, is the same as the molecular. So this guy is tetrahedral. If I have three bonding, so this is like NH3, but when you do the Lewis structure, you feel that you also realize that you have two um, lone pair, or you have a lone pair up here, you have two non-bonding electrons, so I still have one, two, three, and this counts as four electron domains, right, so that's why I'm in the tetrahedral geometry, but I have one, two, three bonding and one non-bonding, three and one. So this guy is called a trigonal pyramid. Or 
tri trigonal pyramidal. If you want to add that AL at the end, that's fine. And then the last one is something like water. Right, so I have one two bonding and two non bonding. And this is also called bent, just like the other one was bent. But this, the bond angles are different. So the bond angles for tetrahedral are always 109.5. Um, and so the bond angles for tetrahedral, trigonal, pyramidal, and bent, and this bent, this bent when you're in electron domain geometry that's tetrahedral, the bond angles are always going to be 109.5. So if you go back over here to this bent, the bond angles were 120. So you have two things that look very similar, um, but the difference in the bond angle, and you're able to measure them, then you can see the difference. Let's do a couple um, examples. All right, so let's try some of these examples. We have, we want to use the VESPER model to predict the electron domain geometry and the molecular geometry of the following. So let's start with O3. So the first step, you want to draw the Lewis structures. So how do you draw Lewis structures? You have to figure out how many valence electrons you have. So oxygen has six valence electrons, and I have three oxygens, so that gives me 18. So if you can't remember how to find those valence electrons, you go back to this periodic table. You've got one, two, three, four, five, six, right? Everybody here has six valence electrons. And we have three oxygens, so three times six gives me 18. So I'm gonna take O and put that in the middle, and then I have an O and an O. So I already used up two, four, minus four. Whoa. So I have 14 left over. I'm going to start on the outside. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12. So I used up, hey, stay. I used up 12 electrons. Minus 12. I have two electrons left over. I put them over here and I'm out of electrons. And I count up this guy on the outside. I have 2, 4, 6, 8. This guy has 2, 4, 6, 8. This guy has 2, 4, 6. He's not happy. So what do I do when somebody's not happy? I delete some of those. Instead of having them just attached to that oxygen, I make a double bond over here. So now those electrons that were over here are now shared between these two. You can draw resonance structures for these. Uh, it's not going to matter so much for, for this example. I'm going to get the same molecular geometry, but if you want to draw the resonance structures and put that double, the other molecule double bond over there, and then the real structure looks like a hybrid of both of those. We don't have to worry about it right now because we're just trying to figure out um, the electron domain geometry, molecular geometry, and everything. So I have how many electron domains? I have one, two, three electron domains. A three electron domain geometry is a trigonal planar. All right, and I have two bonding and one non bonding. So the molecular geometry is going to be bent here. And if you wanted to count the bond angles, that's going to be 120 degrees. So we'll start doing that too. So this picture doesn't, it looks like it's linear, right? I don't know what it's going to look like until I draw it. You can, um, until I figured out you know, what the structure looks like. You could redraw it if you want to, to show that it's bent. That's fine. Um, and again, the real structure doesn't look like that. It looks like a hybrid of, you know, both of those two structures. Let's try this guy, SNCl3. So you're going to have to go back to um, the periodic table, right? You've got your tin over here has four valence electrons and chlorine has seven. So I have four and chlorine has seven times three, gives me 21, uh, plus that is 25. And then this charge tells me I have another electron. So I have 26 electrons total. So I'm going to put my SN and then in the middle, surround it with chlorine, so minus two, four, six. I have 20 electrons, two, four, six. 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, and I have two more over there. Um, this is charged, so I'm going to put it in parentheses with a, and then brackets, uh, brackets. <laughs> uh, so how many electron domains do I have? One, two, three, four. So I have four electron domains, that makes it tetrahedral, and what else? Um, the molecular geometry, I have three bonding, one non-bonding, so that makes it a trigonal pyramid pyramid or pyramidal and if you wanted to look at the bond angles right this is tetrahedral um, so 109.5 right the, the bond angles are mostly determined by the electron domain um, SeCl2 right Se has how many valence electrons We've got six and chlorine has seven times two gives me 14 and six is 20 again if you don't believe me you go back over to 
your electron domains, SE is here, so that's six. One, two, three, four. Don't worry about the D block, that's all full, so those are not valence electrons. So you're counting your outermost S and P. All right, so I've got 20 here. I'm going to put um, C, CL, CL, minus 2, 4, gives me 16, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16. So again, I have four electron domains. It's tetrahedral. The electron domain geometry is tetrahedral. And the molecular geometry is going to be bent. So if you want to redraw that and show that it's bent, that's perfectly fine. Um, the very last one is CO32 minus. I ran out of space. I'll do it over here. I'll do it in red so we don't get confused. So CO32 minus, I have carbon is 4. O is 6 times 3 gives me 18. And 4 is 22. CO3 of the 2 minus, I'm going to add 2 because of that 2 minus charge, so I get 24. I'm going to put carbon in the middle, then O, 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 minus 6. Let's do what? 18. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18. So I'm out of electrons, but this carbon's not happy. So I'm gonna, I can draw all the resonance structures if I want. I'm just going to pick one and put it over here. So I still have 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16. 18, 20, 22, 24, right? This is charged, so I put it in brackets. And I have one, two, three electron domains. So the electron domain ge geometry is trigonal planar, and the molecular geometry is also trigonal planar. All right, so we're gonna look at some more of these.